So now that our character's basic movements and states are set up in a uh, suitable fashion, we can actually go ahead and build out a game level for our character to actually use, rather than just having this black background. Uh, let, one last thing before that, though. I want to go into Characters, Gatherer, and the Swing Animations. I may have mentioned at one point that they shouldn't loop. Now, technically, uh, because our animation switches out after the um, timer is up, we don't see this as a problem, but we should have the swing animations turned off for looping. So just select each of them in the inspector and disable that uh, just so that in the future, if there was ever a case that for some reason the animation wouldn't switch, it shouldn't just keep looping the animation. That would be pretty weird from one button press. So now we can go ahead and go to window and we want 2D tile palette. And I'm going to dock this over here in the top right. And we can start creating a tile palette from the art we bring into our project. So for this to work, you'll need some kind of Pixar based uh, tile set palette. I'm, of course, once again, using Gatherer's exterior and the tile sets are located in the tile sets folder here. So first, I'm going to start and just create a water palette. So I'm going to click here, create a new palette and I'll call this water. For the cell size, I'm not sure if we need to manually set that or not. We'll try with automatic and then it should adjust to the 16 by 16 size of our um, sprite frames. But uh, let's see how that goes. Sort mode, we'll just leave as the default. Later, we'll change uh, sorting in the project settings if we need to. And in the project, I'm going to just create the palettes inside of the tile sets folder where the art was generated. So for tile sets, I'm going to right click and let's do new folder. I'll just call this palettes, go into it, hit select folder. And now we can see that the water tile palette has been created. Now there's nothing inside of here. We need to bring some tiles actually into this for it to work. So if I look at this uh, water tile, I believe it's just a single tile there. Yep. So very basic water. And we can take the tile set water and just drag it into here. And so that we can see this better, I'm going to actually drag this down a bunch so that we can see that each of these grids is going to have one space for one tile. Now let's drag this into here as one single tile. And we need a folder for the tiles. So I guess I'll create a new folder here. Right click, create folder, tiles. And inside of here, I want a new folder for each tile palette's tiles because there's going to be a lot of tiles generated for a single tile palette generally. So I'm going to right click new folder water. So I'm going to store all of the water tiles in tiles and then water. So select into here and then you can hit save to generate the new tile. And then we have one tile which we can use for drawing on a tile map. Now our scene doesn't have a tile map yet. So we can go to the hierarchy, right click do 2D option, tile map, rectangular. And then we'll have the tile map grid. So if I click down onto uh, the grid or tile map, we can see that these tiles are pretty big. So this would be 100 pixels by 100 pixels. So in order to make the cell size actually fit our uh, palette size, which is 16 by 16, we just shrink the cell size correspondingly. So 16 pixels, when 100 pixels is one unit, is going to be 0.16. So 0.16 for the X and 0.16 for the Y. And now this should look more like what we would expect. So uh, this tile map, I'm going to rename it to be water. So we'll have uh, different tile maps for different layers in our game. So some of those tile map layers are going to have uh, tile map colliders so that it can block movement. And then others like water are not, at least initially. So um, all we need to do now is go to tile palette and then we can select our tile and we can start drawing on this water grid like so. Now, uh, one thing you'll notice is that this actually puts the player behind the uh, grid. So what we can do is if you click on the tile map water, you can change the sorting layer to be a different sorting layer or you can change the order and layer to be uh, something below. So generally, I think it's preferable to change the sorting layer, add in new layers. If you know that everything that sits on a layer should be organized below another layer, rather than trying to change the order in layer, which for things that are on the same layer, you can manually adjust whether they show in front or behind. So we know that water is always gonna be beneath everything. So let's change the sorting layer, add sorting layer. 
And then here we have a plus to add a new sorting layer. Give it a name. And uh, I'll call it water, of course. I'll pull this above default. And if we click on water, the tile map, and change the sorting layer to water, now the water is always going to show behind the default layer, which the player is currently sitting on. Okay, so now we can go back to the tile palette and continue working on our grid. Now, you can keep left-click holding and dragging around, adding in one tile at a time like this, but a faster way is just going to be to switch to the box fill tool. You can press U on the keyboard or click up here in the tile palette to do so. And I'm just going to drag a, a gigantic grid, uh, almost a limitless amount of space for our character to um, walk around and interact with. Of course, the limitation is going to be the land that the player stands on, not the water. So uh, in order to add some land in, let's create a new tile palette. So I'll create new palette, and I am going to call this one um, grass. So this is just corresponding with the art pack that I have and the files inside of it. You're, you can organize your tile palettes by whatever name you want. So I'll just create here, and let's go into art, gatherers exterior, um, the, the, the tile sets, palettes, where we had it saved before, and I'm going to select the folder to save the new tile palette inside of. So if I click on the palettes folder, you can see now we have the grass tile set asset file. And to fill that, we need to grab some of the sprite sheets and pull those in here. So uh, let's see, I can't remember if these are actually separated yet by already or not. So um, I'm going to click on tile set grass, sprite editor. And uh, yeah, it looks like we still have to adjust it. So the sprite mode for a tile set like this needs to be set to multiple so we can slice it. Let's go into sprite editor, apply. I'm going to slice this based on cell size 16 by 16, since that's the grid size for this tile set. And I'll hit apply. And now uh, we can go to the tile palette. And uh, now, if we pull in the image, it's going to be using all of these different frames to generate the tiles. So let's drag this in here and drop it. And then we go to Tile Sets, Tiles, create a new folder for the grass tiles. Double click into here, select folder, and we'll generate the 20 or so tiles. And now we can draw these onto a tile map. Now, the ground is going to be on a different layer than the water. So under Grid, I... OK, and if you get this pop up, hit save. So for the grid, I want to right click on it. 2D option, 2D object, tile map, rectangular. And I'll call this one the ground layer, since the ground might have grass or other types of terrain on it, but it's all going to be part of the same organized layer. So to draw ground, we want to go under the tile palette and make sure we're drawing on the ground layer right here um, using the grass tile set. And let's uh, drag in some tiles. So we can use the box fill tool for the basic grass tile here. So I'll just you know, box fill tool, drag something like that. Once again, we can see that uh, the ground is on top of the player. So we need to go to the inspector and add in a new sorting layer. So I will call this the ground sorting layer. And I'll move this above default since the ground is beneath the player and anything else that's standing on the ground. So the sorting layer for the tile map, tile map renderer, sorting layer, ground. OK, that fixes that problem. So now we also need to add in uh, these edge tiles, indicating that we're kind of like on the um, border between the water and the grass or something else. So let's grab those edge tiles with the normal paintbrush, be on the keyboard if you want, and draw in the tiles where they belong. So we're drawing edges here. So wherever there's an edge that borders something else, just draw that in. Now, I'm not going to put these bottom tiles on the ground tile per se, because in this case, I want the collider shape to be just the ground. This part right here is supposed to be where the ground meets the water, and the player is not supposed to be able to walk on it. So it shouldn't be part of the same tile map collider, which will make more sense in a minute. So I'm going to actually create a third layer. So let's right click on the grid, go to 2D, tile, uh, 2D object, tile map, rectangular. And I'll call this something like ground two for now, I suppose. So we'll have another layer. And with the same tile map, I'm just going to draw on ground two now. And let's draw in these tiles below here. So if we click on ground, 
you can see the orange shape that goes around it. If you click on ground two, you can see the orange shape that goes around it. So that's roughly where the tile map collider shape is going to be. So in the inspector for ground, the normal ground, I do want to have a tile map collider. So let's add a component tile map collider. Okay. And when we add the tile map collider 2D, you can see that there's a bunch of these little tile map shapes. Now, in this case, each of these would be blocking the player, which is not what we want. Instead, we need to use a composite collider so that the um, only the edges around here are going to block the player from entering or exiting this space. So add another component and we want a composite collider 2D. Uh, it adds a rigid body, so change that to static because the ground is not going to move in this game. That would be really weird. Uh, so to take the tile map collider and add it to the composite collider, just check used by composite. And when you do that, all of these lines in between should lighten up and the composite collider is going to basically combine this shape into one single collider, which is going to create edges around our ground where we can't walk across. So now if our player was to get to the edges over here, then it would actually block the player from being able to walk there. So to show that even with the tile map collider in composite mode, we can still walk. Let's hit play and you can see we can still walk around this space. So it's only the edges that are blocking us. But uh, we really can't see the edge here because um, we have no follow camera to actually track the player around the screen. So let's add in the center machine package so that we can actually follow the player. So in window package manager, let's go to uh, in this drop down unity registry and we want the center machine package here. So type in center machine and we're going to install this to our project. So center machine makes it really easy to add a follow camera to our scene and track the player. Okay, so with Cinema Machine, if we right click in our hierarchy, we're gonna get access to the Cinema Machine menu. And um, I think what we want is either 2D camera or a virtual camera. Let's try 2D camera first. And uh, this, when we add it, is gonna create this game object virtual camera. If you look at the main camera now, there's also a new component automatically added in here called the Cinema Machine Brain, which controls the Cinema Machine. So let's click on virtual camera and I'm going to try using follow and I'm going to follow the gatherer. So uh, let's hit play and see if that kind of works here. Okay, it does. Um, so that's really all we need to do to get like a simple follow camera. And now you'll notice that as we get to the edge of this ground, we can't walk over it. We can't walk onto the water since this part of the ground is not on the ground layer, but ground two. We also can't walk onto that. So the edge of our ground is serving as a proper barrier, allow, uh, preventing us from going off the edge onto the water, which is exactly what we want. So lastly, for this video, uh, this also in the tiles, some decor. And we can add the decor to this tile palette as well. So we can draw onto a decor layer that rests above the ground. Doesn't block the player, but just serves to make the grass a little bit more interesting. So let's uh, go to the inspector. I'm going to click on the decor tile set file. We're going to change it to multiple sprite editor apply. And I'm going to slice this up. I know everything in here is 16 by 16. So I'm going to slice it, apply. And now those frames I can bring into the tile, tile palette. Even though uh, this is one image and the decor grass is another image, we can put them on the same tile palette, kind of like this, just dragging and dropping. And I'm going to put the new tiles into tiles grass, select folder, generates the tiles. And now we have more stuff to draw onto a tile map. So I'm going to save the changes. On the grid, I'm going to right click 2D object, tile map, rectangular. And I'm going to call this a doodad layer. And in the tile palette, I'm going to change to the doodad layer. And let's start drawing some stuff on it. So, so one thing you could do is change the brush down here to a random brush. And so with that, I'm going to click on the tiles I want to randomly select between. Uh, let's add two random tiles and I'll also select these as well. So that gives us 21 tiles. Uncheck, pick, and add to random. And now if we draw with the random brush, doodad layer. Okay, we got to click away from there so that we only select one square. And yeah, now it's going to be giving us random um, selections. So basically, in a nutshell, first you pick the random tiles. If you need to add more, check add to random tiles. Then uncheck both of these so that you're not setting the random tiles. Then click on brush mode with only one square selected up here. And then that's how you'll be able to easily draw like this onto the doodad layer and just kind of have a, a pretty random selection of uh, tiles being added to your grid. 
So this is a little easier than like manually needing to place every single item. You could just switch back to default brush if you want to manually place exactly the ones you want on your area. You can still use the eraser tool and get rid of a few of the extra doodads if this becomes a bit overkill. Yeah, generally that uh, kind of works there. So one thing that uh, is a little bit of an issue here is that this flower is showing above our player. So we need to work on the sorting of the uh, game so that sprites that are above another sprite show behind the sprite. So let's take a look here. The doodad, uh, the doodad layer is still at sorting layer default, order in layer zero, and that should be where the gatherer is as well. So that means that the sorting is going to be based on something else. So we're going to make that something else, the Y position. Uh, for the objects in our game. So to change that sorting and make sorting by Y, I think we need to go to edit and then let's see project settings. Um, I, it might be graphics, universal render pipeline, uh, double click on that. And then was it render a 2D? Yeah, okay. <laughs> but, so uh, universal render pipeline from graphics and then you double click into render a 2D and then transparency sorting mode, we wanna make custom access and that access should be Y. Um, so the, the way you do this is a little bit different in um, the basic built-in renderer. So if you're not using URP as your renderer, the, the settings are going to look a little different, but you're still going to be looking for that kind of sorting mode and then changing that to custom access sorting by Y. The other thing you got to change for this is for the tile map renderer, change the mode from chunk to individual. So this will mean that whenever we place a different object here, uh, that the sorting is going to be based on that individual object, not on, I guess, like the average of everything inside of that grid, which would be kind of weird. So let's hit play. And now we can go behind the flower and in front of the flower. And the sorting is going to change kind of based on that. Now, uh, you'll see that the sorting is kind of based more on the center point of the character. We already set up the pivot point at the start of this project. So the reason that's happening is because we need to go to the gatherer and change the sort point from center to pivot. So let's enter the gatherer prefab, change sprite sort mode to pivot, hit play. You can see that the character is going to be sorting much more close to down here than it was before where it would have been around the head area. So this makes a lot more sense. It might still need a little bit of uh, tweaking. For instance, it still seems like the flower itself is uh, sorting based on a center pivot point. So it's basically this pivot point of the character versus the pivot point of the flower. Uh, but this is a lot more close to what we were looking for. So let me go ahead and see if we just take those flowers, if we can um, actually just sort based on a pivot point at the bottom of its frame rather than the center point of its uh, sprite frame. So I'm going to go into tile sets, decor grass. Let's open the sprite editor and let's move these pivot points down to more like right around there. And uh, I could just copy and paste the values for them. So Y will be 0 0.1 and the X will be 0 0.5. Let's do that for each of them. 0 0.5, 0 0.1. Then we can go to the next one. Custom 0 0.5, 0 0.1. Then this one. 0 0.5, 0 0.1. Okay, let's hit apply and let's test with that flower. So I'll go back, hit play, apply, and let's see. Okay, nice. That's um, that's a lot more like what we would expect. So now both the sorting point of the players down here and the sorting point of the flower is right there. So going in front or behind of the flower is exactly what we would expect, basically on where both of those two things touch the ground. And that's gonna look a lot more appropriate as we kind of develop our game. So uh, you have to do that for each of the sprites. It's a little bit tedious, but I think it's definitely worth doing to make the game look right. Okay, so for this one, the sort point should be more like that. So 0 0.25, can copy that value, go to the next one, 0 0.25, next one, 0 0.25, next one, 0 0.25. Another thing you could do if you're going to be making your own sprites is just making it so that... Um, when you create a sprite frame, that the center point is always where the sorting point would be, and then you don't need to manually change it. But then that means you're going to be making your sprites bigger, which would be, you know, a little bit weird too. Now you might also want a uh, second doodad layer for stuff like this, where it's so close to the ground that it would always be showing under the player. So you could have a sortable doodad layer, and then you can have another doodad layer where there is no sorting uh, for stuff that's close to the ground, unlike a flower. Alternatively, you can make the flowers game objects by themselves and 
have different rules for them, just sorting them like other game objects, like the uh, player has its own sorting pivot point set up. But generally, that's the gist of how all of this is going to work. So for right now, we could just hit play, kind of hit save, go around testing it. So we can walk behind this rock. Might not make sense, might make sense. Kind of up to you on how you're going to make it work in the game. So in this case, I'll actually take these objects and I'll put them on a non-sortable layer that's just always beneath the player. So I'll take um, doodad and I'll copy it to a new layer and I'll just call this beneath player. So now let's uh, disable the first doodad layer uh, and then for the beneath player doodads, um, let's erase everything that doesn't belong here. So that would be the flowers. So uh, erase, make sure you're erasing on beneath player and let's get rid of that. The flower, flower, flower. Yep. Just going around here and any of the flowers don't belong there. And then all of this stuff will just always be beneath the player. Then we can disable this tile map layer, go back to doodad, enable that and uh, remove anything that doesn't belong here, which uh, is everything but the flowers. So we can erase. Okay. And we, we want to erase doodad here. So erase, erase everything that's not a flower and you can control C if you need to and then enable the beneath player layer and then when you need to draw a flower just draw it onto the flower layer so let's paint with brush doodad and I'm going to add this to the sortable layer for these uh, I'll also change the brush from random to default so we're just selecting the exact frames and let's add those in just a few more flowers where we need them okay so now finally just to make sure that doodad beneath player is uh always going to be actually beneath the player. Let's add in one more sorting layer, add sorting layer, and then we'll give it a name. And I'll just call this beneath, I guess, because it's not always going to be doodads, but yeah, I guess that works for now. And um, then doodad beneath player will actually make that on the sorting layer beneath. Uh, reorganize it in terms of um, what's sorting on top of what here. So doodad will be on top of the normal doodad. Then we hit play and we'll see that these rocks are always beneath the player. These uh, little weeds are always beneath the player, but the flowers still have sorting based on the player's position. So that's the basics of setting up your tile map with different layers, adding in tile map colliders, and getting your objects to sort properly, depending on if you want them to be beneath the player or actually uh, sorting based on the Y position.